we had to follow these storylines. Obviously, we have some crazy storylines, but it's always about what does this character want? What do they need? That's driving everything. And so we're tracking the character movements throughout. Loki season two, episode five, man, mind blowing. This show just gets better and better. Next Thursday can't come fast enough for lo for episode six. Um, first question is uh, we all know why all of Loki's crew was kind of chosen because they're they're basically losers. But B-15 doesn't seem to kind of fit into that. Is there more to her story? Well, first, I actually didn't think anybody was a loser. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, B-15, it just felt like the natural thing of uh, uh, to give Wound Me and B-15 that kind of life because of like who Wound Me is and who B-15 is, like something with real heart. Do you have an explanation on uh, Loki's new power? Can he travel anywhere, anywhere throughout the multiverse at this point? I think we're going to see uh, how that has evolved in the next episode. But I think what we've seen at the uh, uh, the end of episode five is he's learned to control it. Oh, I know. It's so good. Uh, did Loki always recruit his TVA friends in the past rather than he who remains uh, the person that was behind it all? Wait, what do you mean? Did Loki always recruit them? Like, did Loki recruit? Like, because I, I feel like this is this could it's almost like a big Ouroboros, right? Like this is like the snake eating the tail. Is is this like the point where Loki starts recruiting these people to start the TVA rather than uh, he who remains that did it or th that we assume did it in the past? Oh, I think you'll have to uh, watch episode six to get answers to that. But he definitely recruited them in uh, episode five. Can you talk to me about like the Loki's writer room? How does uh, how does it all work? Like, uh, what does that whiteboard look like to tell a story like this? The writer's room was a group of wonderful writers that uh, I, I hired and am gr so grateful for. Let me just mention them really quickly by name. Uh, Rachel Alter, Brett Moline, Amber Dupre, Catherine Blair, and Castro Farahani. And then we had Elena Bayaran as the writer's assistant and Michael Benedetti was my assistant. Uh, okay, so yeah, the writer's room in that, uh, it, was, uh, it was all about character. Um, we had to follow these storylines. Obviously, we have some crazy storylines, but it's always about what does this character want? What do they need? That's driving everything. And so we're tracking the character movements throughout. Interesting. Did anything change uh, from Loki season two to Loki season one in the process of developing some of these characters and where their arcs would be? Um, no, I feel like it was a real just evolution of that. Like uh, we started like in season one, there were murmurs, talks about it. Uh, and then we really started getting into it a after uh, season one came out. Um, but it, we always just wanted it to be an evolution of season one. I mean, and, and it absolutely is. It's the best MCU television show I've seen yet. I mean, it, it blows my mind every single week. Now, was it a conscious decision to have Mobius' a son kind of like uh, Loki and Thor where one wanted to burn stuff? while the other one was a little bit more sensible? Uh, no, 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 I actually wasn't thinking about that at all, but I love that. Maybe, maybe that was in the back of uh, uh, my mind somewhere, I'm not sure. Why did Loki choose to go to the moment right before the temporal loom kind of exploded rather than going to somewhere like before his death? I think you'll have to watch next episode to see. Oh, you have, you see, there's so many questions that I that I, that I I would love to um, that I wish I could just watch episode six now. I wish I could be Loki and go to the future currently right now. Um, now, why did you, why did Loki choose to go back? Or sorry, uh, how much went into the choice of the the Velvet uh, Underground Oh Sweet Nothings uh, song that was played into the uh, show this week? Oh, there was a lot of talk about that. And that was uh, Aaron and Justin. Like that was the vibe they wanted to have in there. And it was funny because like, I listened to Velvet Underground throughout the writing of the season. I always just put music on and then I just go, go at it. And, uh, I, but that was never really the conversation. Like they came to that on their own. Now, there's a lot of fun callbacks that we see kind of like in this episode, like about gutting, gut you like a fish. That's a big callback from uh, season one. What are some of your favorite callbacks uh, from Loki season two that, that we've seen so far? I don't have a good answer for you there. Like I wasn't really thinking about callbacks. I just like, I think of it all as one thing. Sure. So like, it just feels like an evolution of anything. <laughs> Casey, we get to see his backstory starting on Alcatraz. Um, we know that he has so many valuable artifacts in his drawer in season one. Um, was this like a conscious decision to kind of like have him be kind of be a thief and that's why he has all those things in his drawer in season one? No, but I love that reading of it. That is hilarious that like, 
Casey's been pilfering from the TBA. He's just a klepto, and we we just haven't even seen that. That's amazing. Now, uh, first we have the mystery of DB Cooper uh, that kind of Loki is attached to in season one. Now we have the Alcatraz escapees. What other real world mysteries uh, do you think Loki could be behind? Oh, wow. I mean, I think there are so many. And I, I think that's the fun of Loki is that if there's any sort of little mystery out there, you can blame it on the God of Mischief. Right. Now, I mean, now can we just call him the God of Stories? Since he's like kind of going back and like, you know, with all these different stories. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, now, uh, are there what are some of your favorite Easter eggs we've seen throughout the course of this season so far? I think it's all this stuff of uh, we see like around OB and the the guidebook handbook uh timely and just the Uroboros of all of that every little dot of that throughout the thing I, I think is just so much fun yeah like the like the record playing in this last episode felt like that as well um now uh how much were you actively thinking about the upcoming two Avengers movies when writing and crafting Loki season two or was that even a factor at all in, in terms of like the writing process no no we're really fortunate and then we were just siloed off and we're just writing the best season of tv we possibly could and there weren't conversations about like we had to do this or that it was just like earn this do a great job and you have you've done such an incredible job with this show like i said it's my favorite mcu show out there so far um just out of curiosity i know that there's a lot of fans that want you to write the next two avengers movies has there been any talks about that especially since you and michael waldron kind of uh were like the the start started the uh multiverse saga well one like i really appreciate that um yeah, that's michael's territory i definitely don't want to uh, uh tread on that i love marvel i'm so grateful for marvel for giving me the opportunity to do season two and i'll be there as long as they want to have me well hopefully you stick around for a long time because like i said i love this season of loki thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it no thanks joe love the t-shirt